One of the specific types of SharePoint lists out there is a calendar, which is a specialized form of a general SharePoint list that's presented in a nice, in a nice graphical format that you're used to looking at like it's a calendar on a wall. And they're a really handy tool to keep track of what's going on, when, where, uh, availability, events within the office, that kind of thing. And they're super simple to use. If you know how to use it, uh, create an appointment in Outlook, you generally know how to add an item or an event in a SharePoint calendar. They're also ubiquitous in SharePoint. Uh, they, st they first came around in SharePoint 2007. They've been in 2010, 2013, and they're currently in SharePoint Online. The user interface has changed almost n in no way since SharePoint 2007. So uh, you can definitely use this tool regardless of the system you're using. And even if you have an upgrade, it should be pretty simple to continue using it without any issue. So SharePoint calendars are a really good place to record events and schedules. Um, it supports one-off meetings, so a one-time deal, but also recurring series. You can even pull out individual meetings from a series, uh, like on a holiday, if something isn't going to be occurring like you would normally. It's a great place to centralize the goings-on of the office, so everybody knows to go look at the calendar to find out what's going on, to make sure that there's no other conflicting events happening when they want to plan something. Um, and you can even group different types of events on a different calendar. So you can have luncheons in uh, you know, one calendar. You can have meetings in another calendar. You can put them all in one calendar if you want, but you can also separate them out so that there's some uh, diversity in how you keep track of all of your events going on in the office. So SharePoint calendars are basically replacement for wall calendars. Picture your wall calendar, which you may very well have up on uh, this, you know, the wall in your cubicle or office right now. You literally write on it. Um, there's no difference. You're just moving the content into a virtual space that you can access anywhere with an internet connection. So it's not a magic thing. It's not some sort of black magic problem solver. It is really just a, an electronic version of a wall calendar, but now it's accessible to many people. The permissions can be set up on it so that only certain people have access to it, or you can open it up to the whole company, which is totally up to you. But uh, it's a nice handy tool in that respect. So some good example uses. Uh, definitely you can use this to reserve conference rooms or really reserve anything. So if you have specific types of tools that people want to uh, call dibs on every so often, you can do that. Or vehicles, electronics, any sort of uh, item that people may want and use and there's not very many of them, you can use a calendar to call dibs and reserve it. You can track who's out of the office and when. Either you can use this for tracking personal time off if you want, um, maybe not the actual request process, but just to know in a quick graphical sense who's going to be out of the office. And as, every, as long as everybody follows the rules and updates it, there should be no question about who's uh, going to be available and who will not be. You can coordinate corporate events, so keep every event in one place. So when people start scheduling things, there will not be conflicts because everybody knows where to go to check if something's happening. Ultimately, it comes down to no guessing. You're not running into the I'm not sure situation, which is super critical. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration now, show you how to create an event, update an event, delete, etc., and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm in my collaboration site, and I want to find my way to my calendars. Well, on the quick launch on the left side here, you could have your calendars listed here. If you're the site owner, you should probably do that if they're regularly attended or regularly used. Um, but if you don't see them there, you can always find calendars or any other lists or libraries in your site by going to the site contents link, which is there by default. Anything that has this little calendar icon to the left of the name is a calendar. I'm going to use the room, uh, the conference room reservations calendar for this example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, single appointment and a recurring appointment. So first thing I'm going to do is show that this is what a calendar looks like by default. And there are two very easy ways to add something to a calendar. And the first is if you hover over a given date, you'll note that in the bottom right corner of the day, you get a little link that says add. In addition, you can go up to the ribbon up at the top. When in doubt, go to the ribbon. And if I click the events tab, which is equivalent to any other SharePoint list, the item tab, and I click new event, a pop-up will come up with the form to fill out to give SharePoint the information about the event. So let's say we are going to have a new hire luncheon in the conference room. And I want it to be on Monday the 25th and let's do it at noon as all lunches should be 
and we can put in a description here. So let's say, let's welcome all the new folks to the office. You can also give the item a category if you'd like, if one of these makes sense. So we can call it a get together. This is a way that you can categorize some of your items. Uh, you can make an item an all day event like you would in Outlook. And you can also make this a recurrence, which I'll show in the next example. So I'm all done here. I'm gonna click save. And you'll note right here, the new hire luncheon now shows up on the 25th. Let's say I wanted to change this. Well, I see the item here, I can click it. It opens up in the item view and I want to click edit item. So let's say I actually have to reschedule this for 1 p.m. instead. I can change that. I could change a date, the location, time, uh, title, the description, whatever. And I can click Save. SharePoint wants to make sure that I'm cool with that, and I am. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll note that the new hire luncheon is now at 1 p.m. instead of noon. So let's say I want to create a recurring meeting. Well, all I have to do is go up to the Events tab again. When in doubt, hit the ribbon, click New Event. And let's say that I have a management meeting that I want to set up in the conference room. And I want it to be on the 6th. Starting at 4 p.m., ending at 5. And we'll put a little description in here for managers to meet and discuss training, ongoing work, etc. To make this a series, I want to click the Make This a Repeating Event option. There are a number of options here. I can have this happen every day, every weekday. I can choose it to be weekly, have it recur every week on certain days of the week, which is very nice. Uh, I can have it be monthly, so I can either do the sixth of the month, or I can have it be the first, second, third, fourth, or last of a certain day every certain every number of months or I can have it be an annual thing. And the annual thing is actually very useful. So let's say you're putting holidays in here. Some holidays are certain dates. So like Christmas is December 25th, but Labor Day is the first Monday of September. So you can actually do that. You can have this set up and be the first Monday of September. And you can schedule it out to have no end date essentially. So it'll go on to infinity in your calendar. Or you can have it end after a certain number of occurrences or by a certain date. In this case, I want this to be the first Wednesday of every month, so that's already chosen right here. I don't want to have an end date, so I'm going to click the Save button. And you'll see that the management meeting was added here on January 6th, and February kind of uh, creeps in up at the bottom of this uh, calendar here. You can see that the management meeting is also there at 4 p.m. Now, I can go in here and I can change an individual item in a series. So let's say I want to change the February one. Uh, I can either change the whole series, so that would change every single appointment, or I can change the one event. So I'm going to click Edit Item to change the one event, and let's say this one's going to start at 5 p.m. and go to 6 p.m. instead. Made that change. The reoccurrence is already in here. I can't change that because I did not click the Edit Series button. I'm going to click Save. SharePoint wants to make sure that I want to break the recurrence here so that it's going to have its own setup. I'm going to click OK. And I am still in January. You'll note the management meeting on the first Wednesday of January is still at 4 p.m., but the one in February is at 5 p.m. If I go forward into February, you'll see 5 p.m., 4 p.m. for the first Wednesday in March, which is down here. So that's how you create a series and also how you create an individual appointment or event in a calendar, update it, make all those changes. And let's say I don't want something in here any longer. Very simple. Let's say I am canceling the new hire luncheon that I created. All I have to do is click delete item and SharePoint wants to make sure that I'm sure that I want to do that, which I am, and it is now gone. So that is your demo on how to add items and use a SharePoint calendar. I regularly get questions on calendars functionality, which uh, can leave some people disappointed. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with calendars because they're so simple and elegant and they really solve a great problem, which is centralizing when things are happening. But there's also functionality that one would expect SharePoint calendars to have, and they don't. And they haven't been upgraded since SharePoint 2007. There really has been no change to how they work, so I have low hopes uh, as to whether they would be improved in SharePoint 2016 or further on. But there are here are some of the questions. The first is, can we color code them? And the answer is yes, sort of. And considering that I do not ever recommend using code-based solutions, there are code-based solutions, go right ahead, that's totally up to you. But when we're talking non-code-based, you have to keep in mind that the colors must align to a category. So if you're talking about, let's say uh, you wanna reserve uh, one of 
a number of different vehicles that the company owns. Um, that's a category. So the vehicle would be vehicle A, B, C, D, or E. Whenever you have vehicle E reserved, it can be one color, vehicle D, vehicle C, vehicle B, vehicle A, all can have different colors, but you're limited to six really, really ugly colors, and there's no other way to round that. So uh, I'm sorry. Your site owner needs to do this, so whoever's in charge of the SharePoint site that you use in that calendar, there are some steps they have to follow. They're not the easiest to understand. Will a calendar connect to Outlook? No, it does not, but it can. And that's a separate tool that comes with SharePoint, which is called Outlook Integration. But a SharePoint calendar will not create an appointment in Outlook and it cannot affect your availability in Outlook. That's a good thing because if you're going to have a PTO calendar, for example, and you want to keep track of who's going to be in the office and out of the office, this is your option, your alternative to sending out an appointment in Outlook to your entire team saying, hey, I'm out that day and setting it as the status is out of office. Um, because if I get that appointment, I'm going to hate you because I either have to pick accept the appointment and look as if my status in my appointment, in my Outlook availability is not available, or I don't accept the appointment because I don't wanna look like I'm busy or that I'm out of the office, delete it and forget that you're gonna be out. Let's see, next, we're talking, can I connect multiple calendars? So this question comes up all the time. Can I add one thing to one calendar and have it propagate to a number of other calendars? The simple answer is no, not without custom coding, and I do not recommend custom coding. Just learn to live with separated items. If you have to enter something into three different calendars, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, for example, if you have a team vacation calendar plus a department vacation calendar plus something else where you have to put in when you're gonna be out, it's really not that big of a deal to add that a couple times. Lastly, will it identify conflict? It will not. And frankly, it doesn't need to. You really don't want it to because if you're reserving a, uh, if you're doing an out of the office calendar, you don't want a conflict to be identified and say that it, it doesn't, it shouldn't exist. It should. If two people want to take the same day off, that shouldn't matter. So basically, it just comes down to use your head. If you are reserving a conference room at a certain time, don't conflict with somebody else's request. And if it comes down to it and there is a conflict because somebody wasn't paying attention, who, the, every list item in SharePoint has a timestamp on it. So whoever was the first one to create it kind of wins the competition, you know? So I know uh, this is kind of disappointing for those uh, frequently asked questions that I get that functionality, some of those things should definitely be built in. They're not. Uh, I've put in some requests to the SharePoint team at Microsoft I've never really heard back and there has been minimal to no change to how SharePoint calendars work since they came out in 2007. But do know that they are still, I will argue, a very elegant, simple way to keep track of when things are happening in one central place so people have an idea what's going on. I think it's still a positive thing. I think you should use them. I have them all over the place. I have tons of them in different sites. They're very valuable. And once you get into the Outlook integration aspect, you can actually overlay them onto your schedule in Outlook so you can see how those calendars relate to your uh, specific appointments. So happy scheduling. If you found this helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel and uh, send it on to your colleagues because I have a feeling that they would also like to know how to use this and how they could um, you know, benefit themselves and their teams and make things a little bit more organized in their lives. Follow us on social media for the best updates on SharePoint tips and tricks, and we'll see you in the next video.